welcome to episode 64 of Random Thoughts. 64, cool. Yeah. Um, I thought we might talk about compression gear today. Yeah, and I've got a story to kick us off. So I've recently got back into my sort of middle distance running, I suppose you call uh, it. Wait, because people might just tune straight out. So it's before you even get to that, I want to come back to that story. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, it's not like the Gatorade thing where it's a whole bunch of hype and it's just some sugar, salt and water. The compression gear thing is... There's something is, there. There's something legitimately, scientifically there. Lead with headline, nice work. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, recently I've started running again, sort of not much, one to two to three Ks, trying two or three times a week. Every time I do it, my left calf in particular gets really tight. Yeah. Right around the last couple hundred meters and then on the walk home and then after I've cooled down and everything. Yeah. And so I dug out my uh, shin splint compression socks. I noticed. <laughs> I wore them in here and they were a bit ridiculous. <laughs> they were amazingly warm. But what I noticed, uh, so I, wore, I ran in the morning, I think it was a Wednesday. Normally I'd be tight through till Saturday morning. Now to be clear, are you wearing the post yeah, so running ones? Run, the, not, not the running, because there's two different types. Yeah, these are the post ones. These are like the post, so they're extra tight. Okay. Okay. Even when I'm a size smaller, so they're like, oh, did you? like super tight. But like, at least, like not like blue tight. So, okay. I, try, I've, I just recently bought a pair myself as well, and I bought them a, a size too tight. And then I went and sat in the car to answer some emails, and about half an hour, and I'm like, this is actually really painful on my face. <laughs> and I went, went and swapped them. The girl was really nice. She swapped them over. Um, yeah. Um, I'll try to do it too, but I couldn't do it. So, anyway, so, so they're, yeah, size is small, but they're the post, I'm pretty sure they're the post ones. Yeah. Um, but I'd been for two runs, and had been had this 72 hours of calf tightness. After this run, it was tight during the run, and then tight Tightness around. or dons? It was tight straight away. After, was it? After, so I'd run and that last sort of 500 meters would tighten up with every step. Mm. Like that, almost yeah, like that compartment feeling. syndrome type, yeah, like it was yeah, yeah, stretching yeah. it for that. Yeah. And then we'd get home and have a roll and a gen very gentle stretch and would be tight and then sore for the next day. So it's probably, probably a combination yeah, of both. Okay. But when I put the compression skins on last Wednesday and you laughed at me, <laughs> I woke up the next morning on the Thursday with zero pain, could have yeah. done the same run again. It's so interesting. And it was phenomenal. Yeah. And I was like, Maybe there's some placebo going on, but no, I'm, that's I'm, some serious I'm, blood flow moving. I'm fully recovery. sold on it. Yeah. Um, so it's a similar story for me, not that I've had your calf problems, but I'm running three times a week, um, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday. Uh, and for me, and the fastest run is the Sunday, so I push it really hard on the Sunday. I call it, I call it race day. And that's, that's pathetic. But that's, yeah, but race day makes it sound tough. It's kind the, of the, you know, the idea is that, that don't, I'm, not just, I'm not just going to finish the distance, I'm actually trying to push. You get a PB. Yeah. 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 Um, and what well, that means though is that on the Tuesday, I'm still... You're at your sorest time. Yeah, when I'm having to run again. Uh, and then it ends up being a crappy run. And then Thursday is an okay run. I'm actually only getting one really hard run in a week. Because the other two have to be really tame to allow that to happen, which is frustrating. Yeah. yeah. So I went out and I thought about it. I thought, you know what, I'll, I'll try this compression thing as well. And I bought a pair of the post ones and a pair of the during ones. Oh, so you run with them during? No. Uh, <laughs> you should, they're <laughs> great. I bought them and, and they're like, and I, th I said to myself, and I even said to the, sh the, the shop assistant, I said, this is cool, like, no one else in Yoga runs because I'm like the only runner in the park. And you run early in the morning too, don't you? Not that early, like 6.30, is my yeah, window. Not that crazy. Eight, you know, I'm sometimes finishing at 8, so somewhere between 7, really, I'm, I'm out there running somewhere between 7 and, and 8.30. Yeah. So you would think there would be other people running. Yeah, that's a normal running time. Not well, one, not a soul. I may be one every now and then, but it's really funny. Um, but I said to myself, well, who cares? No one's really going to see me running anyway. Wasn't That's there it. just that old guy who tells the story of the old guy? Come on, I'm going to lay my cars, let's. Okay. <laughs> so um, this was at a different run. Um, but I was. This is very, very much a sidebar, but I found this story very funny, so I just want to share it. <laughs> was that where he ran much faster than yeah, me? And, yeah. Yeah. So um, the, the president of. Uh, Spotswood Running Association or something was running in, are in the sometimes in the quarry in um, Newport Lake, which is this amazing place to run. Uh, and he's running along, and um, and I'm just keeping pace with him at one point. And because uh, you go, you weave, and you go all these different places. Just keeping pace, I'm feeling not good. I'm like, look at me, I'm running faster than the seven year old. But I'm like, it's pretty good. And then <laughs> and then I finish my run, warm down, stretch, have a drink, blah blah blah. And then he and his mate finish and I introduce myself say hi and I'm um, like how far did you run he's like oh 17k like that was his 17k pace so he's almost half marathon 
He's, he's quick. Yeah, it's always oh, gold, eh? Hey? They're incredible. So, so impressive. Anyway, um, sorry, I've sidetracked sorry, you. Back to your, no, I sidetracked you. Back to your skins. Your yes, compression. Your compression. Um, and yeah, the difference is really, really noticeable. And I think the the benefit, the touted benefit has always been that the extra compression helps with blood flow. Okay. And, and lymph drainage, so you get, yeah. you're promoting more blood flow to it and you're also getting the other stuff out, so you're yeah. kind of like you're promoting circulation. And, and so it makes the most sense that the best bang for your buck area for compression is actually from the knee down because that's the area the blood is going to have the most trouble getting back up to your heart because it doesn't unless your muscles are contracting you need yep. your muscles to contract in the calf for venous return yeah um and so i noticed that but what i also noticed so i'm wearing a pair right now yep. Yep. under the pants under the pants <laughs> yeah i'm not i'm with shorts what i notice is that when i'm wearing them i'm aware that i'm in recovery mode and so I tend to pump my car, like right now, I'm just sort of moving my calves around a little bit. When I'm in the car, I move around more. The, the proprioceptive benefit of the pressure on my skin reminds me that I'm trying to recover my calves from my run on Thursday. It's almost like a, a mindfulness effect. Yeah, it's sort of alerting me that I'm in recovery mode. So I try, and so, so there's definitely the physiological benefit of the compression itself. Because scientifically, it's not, the evidence isn't actually phenomenal. Like it's kind of like, well, it seems to maybe help a bit, like, and with injuries as well as just so, general. So let's just say, and I don't know the stuff, let's just say for the sake of argument, there's a five percent benefit in wearing them just in the base. I don't think really it's that much, but yeah, yeah, it's called two percent, well, not much. Yep. But I reckon there's like a twenty percent benefit in the fact that it's a constant physical because they're a little uncomfortable. Mm. Uh, it's a constant physical reminder that you're in recovery mode, so you move more, you pump your calves more. I'm more likely to roll my calves when I come like, oh, that's right, my calves. Mm. Um, mm. And uh, you just you give it more attention. It's almost like it's bringing the nervous system on board to that muscle permanently, mm. and mm. so it's constantly sort of. This is it sounds very sort of. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that it's even that. I reckon it's just it's just like you could, I reckon you could get just the same benefit if you had. Uh, a reminder that every that gently told you every uh, three minutes you're recovering your calves and just gently poked like you had a little device you strapped around your leg had no compression and it just went like this yeah like and it just touched little, the calf, a little bounce gave a little tap just to say hey you're recovering yeah I mean that, yeah that's sort of how I feel about it yeah because it's fascinating stuff mm. um uh so so the benefits so yeah unlike sports drinks whose benefits can be over pushed i think the benefits of compression stuff are significant from a recovery point of view because of those factors um and the other thing is it's free like unlike an ice bath where you have to get the ice and get in there and it's painful and you have to time it and you can't you're shivering all them compression just chuck it on and continue with and, 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 and away you so go. i ran in the morning came back rolled and stretched chucked them on yep. got on the bike came into work i find so i've got the, the running ones I said and the, and the full compression ones. I find that the, I'm wearing the, the running ones just for when I'm not emotionally up for having the really, because that one's really uncomfortable. After about four hours, they get a bit scratchy and a bit squashy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm trying just doing the lighter grade ones because I think the benefit of the lighter grade is I'll, I'll do it more often because it's less of a commitment. Okay. Uh, and that's, I'm still getting that benefit of the alert and the proper yeah. and, and the moving. Yeah. Um, and so their recovery benefits are huge. Um, I don't find running in the full, like I have a couple of pairs of the full ones. I've got a full skin, full leg skins. Um, I said oh, compression. I keep saying skins. Because yeah. they were first, but they yeah. don't even exist anymore. I think they do, but yeah. yeah. Um, mine are two times two because I think they're really good. I just got them because I was a tightest. Because yeah. <laughs> this is back, I got them back when I was getting my shin splints. So I just want, I just want to suck those. Yeah. They didn't help for my shin splints as yeah. an aside. Um, but I've still got them now, and they work great for just general calf tightness. Mm. Um, yeah, but I don't, I don't find I find them a bit not comfortable for running. I like, I like my running shorts to just settle into the run. Yep. Um, but the other benefit for uh, team sport athletes is the proprioceptive benefit at high speed. Yeah, the so I was going to say let's switch tack from recovery into performance. Mm, yeah. So yeah, that proprio effect because everyone sort of. I think the blood flow thing is underestimated when it comes to recovery, but overestimated when it comes to yeah. during performance. Oh, increased blood and, flow, and, and reduced fatigue, and vibration. And, and there's stuff. that oscillation, that idea that it's it's pressing you, it's holding so you. So your muscles don't shake as much, and therefore they're not going to tear. Um, maybe. Or they save more energy, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, like, but I think that's marginal. I think you got to, the, the the big the the not marginal. <laughs> the central. The central. Nice. 
<laughs> the central the central benefit yep. um, is that it's uh, giving you enhanced proprioception, so you've got a better sense of where your body is in space, and therefore muscles are more likely to switch on in response to that feedback system, and therefore your VMO is going to activate better. Glutes, yeah. Your hamstrings, the timing, everything's going to be. You're, you're going to have just better sensitivity to when you're in or out of alignment. Yeah. Um, and the science on that is very clear. Um, kind of, kind of, that's kind of one of the arguments for how um, things like kinesio or physio tape, or rock tape, yeah. those sort of things. I think we've touched on that before, haven't we? Yeah. Briefly, yeah. yeah. Um, that's kind of working on the saying that proprio, because it provides this lift for the skin, you're aware of it. It's not so much helping blood flow or anything, but it's making you aware of it. So it's kind of that reminder, hey, let me recover. Hey, let me recover. Because proprio is, proprioception, the, literally our sixth sense, um, is the body's awareness of joint position in space without visual feedback. So you close your eyes, you know your finger is going to touch your nose. Just. Now that I get nervous. Um, <laughs> uh, but, and it's, it's because you've got these reference points. And that's why, that's why kids, when they're growing rapidly, get all unco. Yeah. Because all the mapping, all the reference points they like have. Baby drops. <laughs> it's all that all like, you know? Yeah. Because yeah. um, their nervous system, their proprio, doesn't, yeah. literally doesn't know where their limbs end and when the joints are relative to each other. So they, yeah. it takes time to coordinate and regulate that. Out of, out of date. Yeah. Um, and so the benefit of, of the skin is, is actually, it's enhancing that mapping. The skin, I said it again. Compression yeah. guard. That compression. Uh, because you're feeling it against your skin and therefore it's kind of, it's, making it a, a more distinct reference point. Yeah. Um, which is pretty interesting. Which is um, hard to study. Some, and uh, you know the, the sleeves that some players Shoes use for well. shooting? I mean, that's a, that's a proprio thing. It's, it's a warmth thing. It started as a fashion thing. And started as, it was Alan I was going to the first He was the first guy. And then Dwight Howard did the double sleeve, and now they do the sleeve of the elbow pad, which makes a lot of sense. Because yeah. I'm a shooter, I do not want to bang my elbow. Yeah. On defense and then have to go... Or get it banged while you're shooting and feel it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, this, they, they look very cool. But they also provide um, that proper feedback and a little mm. warmth and the sort of the feeling of... And then it, it, it becomes... Not to overplay it here. I feel like mm. we've done a good job of selling compression here, but... Uh, on Which, the, uh, no share... Like, uh, do you have any shares in the 2x2? Two two? No. I, I like the 2x2 two two ones because they're the best, but they're also crazy expensive, so I haven't got any of the full ones because yeah. I just can't afford that business. Um, but I've had skins before, I've had um, Champion, I've had all the brands. And they all They've got a good, good new one that I, again, I can't afford either. <laughs> it's, it's, poor, it's poor doing a startup. Um, uh, that it's a, re, a specific recovery one that actually has a, a hooks in around your foot, like it's like a sock that you oh, slide, yeah, yeah, slide your foot through. Because the, the downfall of the traditional ones is that they're compressing you right up to the top of the ankle. And then the foot just fills with blood underneath. Yeah, it? yeah. So these ones, um, they're pretty cool. So yeah. they're probably at some point ones I'd like to get. I reckon, because um, then occasionally it might be the the, the full ones. Um, but uh, back to what I was yeah, saying sorry. about not to oversell it. There is a lot of placebo that once you've had a good game in a pair of compression tights or, or shorts or gone for a good run and you're in your things, it becomes this placebo as well. So the, that, and that's not to say there's no no benefit. It's kind of this tie-in, which makes it, which is why the, the research and the science isn't that good yeah. because it's kind of oh, it's a bit of placebo, it's a bit of compression, it's a bit of proprioception, it's a bit of blood flow. All these things happen together. When we do the science and, and look at the research, they try and isolate one out of the time. Yeah. But the truth is, you're just getting half a percent from all of them, and that adds up to your three or four percent benefit. And then I think like your twenty percent benefit of. The, the reminding you that you're in recovery mode, which is pretty much impossible to study. I couldn't yeah, think you're, of it. You're never going to prove it. Um, and the other thing is, is what you were starting on, and I dismissed three minutes ago, um, is that so? There's that the benefit of actually the, the reminder of the tap, and there's also that benefit of of another way, you know, tactile way of telling you you're in recovery mode, and to go um, parasympathetic. That's what you were kind of yeah uh, switch the way off yeah yeah so I think there's, there's that as well um, some usage warnings um, there's really only one wear courtesy shorts like if you're in a long tights just wear a pair of shorts over them don't don't be weird in the gym wearing if you're a guy just walking around strutting yeah, that, around that's a guy rule that's a guy rule girls don't wear courtesy shorts for guys wear courtesy shorts. <laughs>